Today I want to talk about the hardest places you're likely going to find in literally every hard piece that is out there. If you're sometimes frustrated by a piece that feels choppy, but you can't quite put a finger on what's the difficulty there, you've likely run into one of these two tricky spots. My name is Susanna, I am a harpist and a harp teacher, and in this video I will show you where these tricky bits are and how to navigate your way around them. Let's get to it! If you ever played a piece where some of the music is printed on one side of the page and the rest of it on the other, you will know how annoying it is to learn and practice the section around them. You will either have to turn the page back and forth until you memorize what's on both sides, or you may well end up copying some of the music and pasting it in one bit or the other. There are two other places which don't look nearly as bad, but make practice equally difficult for our mind. You will find them first at the end of each and every line, and then between the bars. Yes, there will be your gaps between the lines and the bar lines. And when you think about it, there shouldn't be anything really preventing your brain from continuing when the rest of the music is literally a few centimeters or maybe even millimeters away. And I am sure you know really well that the line isn't there to signal a break or a place to stop, but that it's merely an indication that you're moving from one measure to the other. But to our mind, even when we explain that logically, these lines and empty spaces really may feel like everything comes to a halt until they will receive some more instruction. So, how to practice to make your way around these mental blocks? Let me share with you a few tips so we can keep the music going. Sometimes all you need to do is just be aware of these potentially tricky places. So if a piece sounds choppy, try to listen out. Where is it that you keep stopping? And then ask yourself, could it be that it's not the actual notes, but perhaps a bar line or end of a line, which is part of a problem there? Watch out, especially in places where you've got a long time value and then nothing else after that. For your brain, it will likely feel like it's time to stop and rest, but give it a gentle nudge to use that time to have a peek at what happens next. If you have a group of fingers that are placed together across a bar line or between the end of one line and the beginning of the other, make sure you mark this in with a placing bracket. Here are two examples from my arrangement of Silent Night. Just before section B, between bars 26 and 27, the right hand will need to place three fingers on the notes D, E, G, as they all go in the same direction, up. So make sure you've got that bracket marked in and that you watch out for it later, so before you play the third finger, you have all of the fingers on, including the thumb. Then, at the end of bar 35, you will see that both notes in this bar are supposed to be played with the second finger, but the first note in the next bar is supposed to be played with the thumb and connected to the previous one. To make sure that this is what happens, I added the number 1 in the empty space above the end of the line and connected it to the previous note with the bracket. I know that to some harpies this may look a bit strange, but to be honest I don't mind my score looking a bit weird, as long as it helps my fingers do the job. If you haven't got any brackets connecting across a bar line or end of a line, your fingers are likely coming off just before and coming on just after. In that case, they need to know really well where to go to make sure that your hand doesn't end up going on a mad search around the neighboring strings or lands on the soundboard or even on your lap instead. Placing practice is exactly what you need in here. Let's look at another example from The Silent Night, where your right hand comes off in bar 49 and then needs to come back on in bar 50. As you can see, here we've also got a long note and quite a bit of time in this bar, so perfect opportunity to teach the hand to use this time well. You can start with placing both groups of fingers without playing, then you can play these two groups as chords, And finally, you can play them as written, making sure that you place as soon as you come off the middle C and that you don't start playing until all four fingers are on, for both groups. A really cool trick to give your brain a bit of an easier time is to remove the obstacles that it's struggling with. And this works great if you're reading music on an iPad or another tablet where you can edit markings in the score. Pick a section of a piece or an exercise and use the white pen to wipe out all the bar lines in there. It doesn't have to be perfect, as it will be still easier for your brain to go through these white bits rather than reading the black bar lines. Try it once or twice like that before you remove your white markings again, and then get ready for a surprise of how much easier it will be to play even with the bar lines back in. 
It's a bit more time-consuming when you use a physical score, but if you can make an extra copy of the piece, then you can make a practice version where you remove the bar lines with a tipex, so you can also get to feel what it's like not having to stop. My next tip is based on the exact same trick you would use if you had music printed on two sides of the same sheet of paper, where you make a copy and stick it into the music, so you can carry on reading without having to stop and turn the page. It's just that instead of end of a page, you put it at the end of a line. If you want, you can try to stick it there in a way that will allow you to fold the extra bit or hide it from view, so you can practice reading the original version too, and give your brain an opportunity to practice some flexibility too. You will likely hear harp teachers saying, you just need to look ahead and keep going. And this is a very good advice, and of course this is exactly what we should be doing, but we also need to understand that for our brain this will literally feel like jumping through hoops, and it will need some support, training and encouragement to make it happen. So make sure you're going slow enough, so you've got plenty of time to remind yourself to look ahead, and make the effort to have a peek after a bar line or beyond the end of a line. And yes, I know, you're probably tired of being told to slow down every time something doesn't work, and you may even feel that it doesn't make any difference at all, apart from slowing down your progress even further. This is because there is one more key ingredient to make slowing down helpful, and this is looking ahead. If you slow down your playing, but don't use that extra time to peek at what's happening next, your mind will just follow the old habit and simply take advantage of any extra time that it's getting. So make sure that while you play slow, you keep thinking fast, and the moment you arrive at the place where you'd normally stop, you instantly look at what's beyond the bar line, or what's at the beginning of the next line, so you can get ready for what comes next. One way to get the feeling of what it's like to look ahead is to ask someone to help you by taking a small piece of paper and covering up the section of music that you just played. Now that there's nothing more to see where you just played, you will naturally have to move your gaze to the next bit. Make sure you slow right down when doing this. If you play fast, the person who's helping you will be moving along with you fast, and you don't want to stress yourself out, but you want to make it as easy for yourself as you can. Of course, it's not really practical to do this on your own, especially when you're practicing playing hands together. It is still possible to encourage your mind to look forward, but it will require higher level of focus and determination when you're working on your own, because it's something we're not really used to be doing. If you'd like some more help going through this process, make sure you check out my new online training where I'm teaching you all about it while making sure you're not making things too difficult for yourself by going too fast. Follow the link in the description of this video for more information, and if you'd like to feel more confidence and freedom when reading music, this one is a must attend, so make sure you check it out. And when you continue your own practice, make sure you give yourself the time you need, but also some grace. Because this is something we're not really used to be doing, it can take some time for you to feel what looking ahead really means, and even when you know, it can be hard to make sure you're doing it every time you're playing. Even experienced musicians do get caught up with this, so don't be too harsh for yourself and keep coming back again and again. I promise every time you practice will make a difference. So as you can see, sometimes it's not the notes that can cause problems when you're reading music. Luckily, there are quite a few ways to get around this challenge, and the good news is that when you practice looking ahead in one of your pieces, your skills will transfer and make it easier to learn new tunes. Now, I'd like to hear from you. Have you ever noticed reading music being a bit of a challenge in these places? And if so, which of the tips that I shared with you today are you going to try first? I'll be looking forward to hearing from you and seeing you here again very soon. Make sure you subscribe to get notified about new episodes of Coffee Break Harp, and click like if you enjoyed this episode. I will see you here very soon. Take care for now. Bye!